Coming up on Inside California Education. The hospital school has done a great job of supporting everything that I need to succeed in, in academics. Kids undergoing medical treatment stay on track with their schooling at the Stanford Children's Hospital, thanks to its unique hospital school. Some of those notes from India. Long Beach teachers are incorporating videos into their everyday lessons, part of a pilot program with the online Khan Academy. Experience a day in the life of a sign language interpreter in Elk Grove. So everybody, let's talk about what you have been building, okay? And journey outdoors to Sly Park an environmental like education center in the Sierra Nevada foothills. I'm Jim Finnerty. It's all coming up on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Thanks for joining us on Inside California Education. Students battling serious illnesses already have enough on their minds without also having to worry about falling behind in school. But there's help available. Seth Allspot takes us inside one of California's hospital schools where healing becomes the first priority along with learning. Meet some of the young patients at the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, Stanford. Some are battling critical conditions like organ failure or cancer. But for four hours a day, they get to be something else entirely, students. They might be sick for a very long period of time, and we still want them to feel like they have a future, and we want them to have as normal a life as possible. And for a child, normal means going to school. Sometimes we see them in their rooms and, you know, they're, it, they're sad or they're upset or they're um, scared. Whereas in here, they can be kids and we really just try to treat them like they're kids. Two classrooms on the third floor of the hospital make up what's known as the hospital school. It's a joint program of Palo Alto Unified School District and the Stanford Children's Hospital. Kindergarten through 12th grade students attend daily classes taught by accredited teachers, just like any other school except the students here have other challenges to overcome. Many of them come with accoutrement, so they'll either have poles that they're attached to with receiving medication. Sometimes kids come with one-on-one -on -one, uh, nursing aids. We get kids who they're waiting for organs, and so they're here for a year or more than a year. Um, you know, we don't want to put their lives on hold. For some of them, they're so grateful because if there wasn't a school here, they would not have been able to graduate, they would not have been able to get credits, they would not have been able to keep up with their homes. And one of the things they want to do is be able to get discharged from here and go back and go back into their, their regular lives. I was diagnosed with the chronic myeloid leukemia in 2016, and I actually only missed one week of school before I returned to actual, like, normal school. I had a mutation of my leukemia, and it's got worse. And since then, I've been out of school since February of 2017. Right now, he's doing good. He's back at school. Thank you very much to Stanford School, I would say, because my lo son loves school. Well, we said we don't want to run into that. When Ryan's immune system is strong enough, he'll return to his home school. He's told that's just weeks away. It's definitely going to be different going back because I've adapted to coming to the hospital school every day. It's nice. It's really, the hospital school is really different from normal school because you, you can do really what you, what you need to get done and everyone's, you can talk, do, do what you need to do and the, the atmosphere is completely different from normal school. They take care of these kids. They treat them they're like their own kids. While Ryan's stay is soon ending, little Yasin's is just beginning. 
Teacher Kevin Daney is getting him used to the whole idea of school. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. He's a kindergartner. He comes in each day expecting that before he gets to work, he's going to at least have a, a moment of, of relaxation, social time, and get used to the change between the hospital sitting, setting and the school setting. If the students here find themselves in a dramatically different environment for learning, so do the school's seven full-time teachers. They might be teaching any number of grade levels all at once. Students might attend for a day or a year. And by teacher Kathy Ho's calculation, education is merely job number three. The medical always comes first. And then under that, for us, I think it's the socio-emotional well-being of the kid, and then below that, it's the academics. Because sometimes you just, you're not going to learn math if you don't feel good. Or you're not going to learn math if you just got really bad news. There's no point in us pushing that on them. David Yano knows what it's like to endure those ups and downs. His battle with leukemia brought him here for his senior year in high school, but that was three years ago. Now in college, he's back as a mentor. When I was first diagnosed, I was a senior and I had no direction and no knowledge of what I wanted to do in life. Uh, but like when I saw, when I was an inpatient, I saw how many, how many families cancer affected or like illnesses affected in general. So I thought maybe I could give people hope and like tell them what's gonna go down like in the hospital. And maybe they'll like, it'll uplift them to, to fight their own battles. You can relate to everyone here, like in a, in such a different level, because like we all go through the same struggles in our everyday lives. The transition from the hospital, where everyone understands your struggles, back to regular school can sometimes be jarring. That's why the hospital created a program called HEAL. It stands for Hospital Educational Advocacy Liaisons, and it helps families smooth the transition. We work with their families to be sure that they're being adequately served when they go back to school because a lot of school districts are not used to having a child with a chronic illness in the classroom. Oftentimes the teachers may see, you know, the, some behavioral difficulties or think, think the child's not trying hard or not listening or not doing well or could work faster and it's really trying to understand that you know, that this child has had some, uh, some, you know, exposure to medications or some treatment or some surgery procedures that have left them a little bit slower than they were. And really trying to help them understand that it's not just a behavioral issue, they really are trying their best and doing, the, doing their, what, what they're capable of. For each of these kids at the hospital school, the goal is the same, a return to health and normalcy, as Ryan hopes will happen to him in just a few more weeks. Uh, the hospital school has done a great job of supporting everything that I need to succeed in, in academics. Okay, we got it. Or an outcome awesome. like David Yano's. I feel great. Uh, it's been three years, three years cancer-free. I can say I became a better scholar by coming here. The hospital school at Stanford is named for Lucille Packard, who volunteered with children battling tuberculosis in the 1930s. Her husband, David, was the co-founder of Hewlett Packard, and the couple used their good fortune to help others. Among the recipients of their generosity, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, and of course, the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Technology is playing a greater and greater role in public schools all across California these days with the state's annual standardized tests now being done on computer. The Long Beach Unified School District is taking it one step further. They've begun a pilot project with Khan Academy, an online tutoring website that provides videos and other tools for students and teachers. So like we've used Khan Academy before, you guys are gonna be numbered off and do the different civilizations and take notes about the different themes. Andrea Glenn teaches advanced placement world history at Millican High School. Her Khan Academy reference centers on a new pilot program with the Long Beach Unified School District. Several years ago, educator Salman Khan began placing math help videos online for family members who lived across the country. Almost as, a, I think, a bit of a joke at the beginning, he called it Khan Academy because it was for all of his family. Um, but it quickly became popular because it was on YouTube, accessible for anyone. And so it just spread and spread beyond the family and gradually became what it is today. 
Today, the Nonprofit Academy creates video lectures and tutoring materials that include history, science, and economics, as well as the math used in Julie Santana's sixth grade class. Just give me your answer and we'll take votes on some answers here. So the reason that I um, jumped on board with the Khan Academy pilot program is because I personally have been using it for, uh, I don't know, six years. So I know its value, so I'm able to tell the kids, you know, it's a brilliant program, you can stop it, start it, skip ahead, whatever it is, you can make it work for you. We need to better understand the fall and the collapse of these civilizations. I use Khan Academy as a way to give them content that isn't just the textbook. The textbook is really dense and it's written at a very high level and the students struggle with that text. And I don't want to take that away from them. I want them to still learn how to read a complex text, but Khan Academy breaks it down in a, in a more simple way. We had over 100 teachers who agreed to, to enter this pilot and it's just been nothing but all positive. So you know it's working when you're hearing from the, the folks in the field how positive this has all been. We all recognize that the majority of students are reached in a classroom by a teacher. That that's where the learning happens. And so we know that we're not going to be helpful for as many students as possible unless we're helpful for teachers and classrooms as well. The partnership with Long Beach Schools is one of the first for Khan Academy. Khan provided professional training for teachers and supplies its online content without cost. And there's another critical aspect. The significance of it being a free resource is substantial, but even more important than the fact that it's a free resource is that it's curated and vetted. What we want is a measure of quality, and we want a measure of integrity in the content. We want to know that engagement in the content is going to produce an academic outcome. So what is the civilization that you're working on? Today we are studying the rise and fall of specific empires, so I'm doing the Han Dynasty, which lasted about 400 years. Instead of having to open a big textbook and having to read for a long period of time, in Khan Academy you can just go on a video that summarizes a huge like section of a unit in a five to ten minute video. We're in a generation where kids are have access to computers so early in life. We call them the digital natives because that's a part of their life. So our kids are really excited that they're learning math on, on a computer doing fun games even though they're still learning. My dad kind of calls me an old soul because I like older type things, but books are not my thing. Textbooks, no. So I'm just like, te technology, yeah, it's better for me. To be honest, to me, I feel like the videos could be the most helpful because he explains it to you in different forms and everything. So sometimes I watch a video, sometimes I just keep trying until I get it right, because most of the time it's just little mistakes. Our teachers are telling us how this is helping them to differentiate their, their instruction, how to help students who need uh, assistance, whether it be remedial, whether they can fast forward for students who need acceleration. This is our first year, actually, of piloting with public school districts here in the U.S. to try to learn about how we can make Khan Academy more helpful for teachers and students in those districts. So, if you missed some problems on last night's homework, or you're just feeling like, I just want a little more practice to be sure, that's where you should start today. There are videos and there are practice problems there. The online tutorials give students a chance to practice at home in addition to class. Khan Academy provides immediate feedback, letting students know how well they're doing. I was watching a video that Khan was talking about a problem and he said to pause the video and try it out so I, tr I tried it out and I didn't get the correct answer so I tried it again. The second time I tried it I got the right answer. She was able to see that immediately. It's, it's not doing 50 problems for homework and wondering how many of them are right. She knows right away I did seven problems and only two of them are right and tutorials are available in languages other than English. What we're very excited about is that these students are now able to access very complex content in order to continue their academic learning while they're also gaining their English language acquisition and English language skills. 
Initial test that, results for Andrea's history class show a 20% increase in test scores so over class averages last year. And while the technology allows teachers to assist students with either remedial or accelerated work, it also provides real-time monitoring of the classwork underway. Definitely. Spencer, who's sitting under the window, is watching a video about the Zhou, Qin, and Han dynasties. Uh, Vinny is looking at the same video. Uh, Kyle is looking at a comparison of the fall of empires. So I can see exactly what they're working on, which is kind of nice as a teacher. So this is truly a game changer on so many levels, not just the classroom activities, but changing for life. Long term, I think we'd hope to see that uh, teachers across the U.S. are finding this as a really helpful um, weekly or daily resource that they can use with their students across a variety of subjects. You know, sixth grade math is sixth grade math, but if they take away a skill like the ability to help teach themselves later as they move up in math, you know, that's something that I'm really happy I gave them. We see it as one of many tools to accelerate student achievement to better equip teachers to meet the diverse needs of students and also to bridge the gap between teaching and learning. Khan Academy videos have been viewed more than one billion times all over the world in multiple languages, including German, Arabic, and Chinese. The programs are also being provided offline, directly to students in rural areas of Africa and Latin America. One school in Ghana has even incorporated the Khan Academy into their math curriculum. Still ahead on Inside California Education, we'll visit an outdoor learning laboratory in the Sierra Nevada foothills, where students are learning lessons in science and life. But first, a day in the life of a sign language interpreter. So when you go to find your book in the library today, you may need some I saw sign language as a very young child and uh, became just very passionate about it. I had to know it. It was just like this driving force in my life. I'm very fortunate. A lot of people don't get their passion met through what they do, and I do. My name is Jeff Lewis. I'm an interpreter at Monterey Trail High School and Edward Harris Middle School. Do you have a certain type of cookbook you want? My first class is a math class, and then I go to my second class, which is an English class on the middle school campus. It's a teamed class, and so we work with five students in there. And then uh, I come back to the high school, and I have a, another English class. And I basically do the same thing. I interact with my kids. I interpret, provide access, support. Oh, good job, man. What is it? A lot of our kids go home and they don't have any language at home, so nobody knows sign language. We spend a lot of time developing relationships with our kids so that they have that access and those, uh, that support that they need through their, you know, teenage years or younger. Cake my way. Oh, see, there's cake right there. Do you want that one? Oh, okay, girl. This campus is uh, large. It's over 2,000 uh, students and uh, staff, and and so you know the, their their world is basically consists of their peer group of deaf students and a few signing adults, and then the interpreters and and on campus and the teacher of the deaf. So it, it's kind of a small world, but here it's very big. Do you guys have your notes from the first two sections? We went through and analyzed word choice. Mm -hmm. We were stopping and answering these questions. Good job. Those years of your life, everybody's very self-conscious. People are looking at me, you know, what are people thinking about me? So just by, you know, modeling confidence and, and, and pride in who we are as people in the language that we use, it's very important. We have six, a little over six hours a day to give them as much language as we possibly can in any way that we can. Like I told her, I'm going to tell you too, if you make it, you have to bring me one. I want to taste it. Okay. I want to see them happy in 10 years and, you know, whatever brings them happiness. That's I want to run into them at a deaf event or interpret for them at a medical appointment or I just, I want to see them be successful. That's, that's my goal for them. Young people growing up in busy urban areas may not get many chances to experience the great outdoors. Well, that's why programs that take students out of their comfort zone and into the wilderness are so important. Kristen Samo shows us what kind of discovery is happening at outdoor education centers like Sacramento's Sly Park.
talked about why I keep Geo as my nature name. What does it mean? As you look at this snake right here, what are some of the things that you notice about it? So everybody, let's talk about what you have been building, okay? Every year since 1970, thousands of sixth graders from schools across Northern California head to Sly Park, an outdoor environmental education center in the Sierra Nevada foothills. Here they spend five full days learning in and about the great outdoors. So experiential education is what we're focused on here at Sly Park. And um, it's, it's learning by doing. It's hands-on experiential education. We want them to be picking stuff up, handling stuff, and going through a process of figuring out you know, what they notice about it, being able to describe it, and if they have any questions, and trying to access some of the prior knowledge that they have on different things. Remember, not holding it like a baby either. There you go. Sly Park was originally a Job Corps facility. Later, the U.S. Forest Service partnered with the Sacramento County Office of Education to offer a way of learning that kids just can't get in a classroom. Um, I noticed that the legs are really sticky, um, and it kind of does look like an uncooked green bean, but like also kind of like bamboo as well. It's a really like neat tie into what um, teachers are teaching in the classroom. There is a really great shift happening in science education right now, where uh, we're moving from California uh, science standards and into next generation water, science standards. And the activities and the lessons that the students are learning here at Sly Park tie in directly so, yeah, to those next generation like science standards. So, yeah, they're just, they're teachers, just, parent chaperones, and even kids will tell you the learning that goes on at Sly Park extends beyond science lessons. Many are also life better. lessons. I challenge you guys to step it up a notch and give everybody in your team a job to do. We're putting this stick this way and then this is stacking like that. Teamwork, perseverance and creativity. That's what students are practicing during this shelter building activity. They're communicating with each other and they're learning from each other and they're learning how to delegate and, um, and learn how to get along, which is, is important. It had to like have to make you like stay warm, to be waterproof, and to fit like a few people. This team met the challenge, working together to build a shelter they could all fit into. And while they were hard at work, this happened. I don't think he sees us yet. What did everybody notice about the way that deer moved? It could jump really high and it was like really graceful because it was just like, it was just moving like really, yeah, really yeah. swiftly. And it's like, I yeah, love it was that observation. So it jumps real high. Is that an adaptation? Yes. Yeah. The Sly Park teachers do a great job of um, incidental learning, things that they see on the trail or in um, the different activities that they do around here, they do a great job of integrating the standards. For many kids, another lesson comes in living away from home for a week in cabins with 20 other students, many they're meeting for the first time. Dude, your face looks really weird. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Whether it's in the cabin or out on the trail, it's an outdoor laboratory where students take part in activities that are both educational and fun. We do arts and crafts. We do, the, of course, the planetarium, the scopes, and we do animal rooms where we get to learn and hold, we get to hold a snake, and it's so much fun. Those operating the Sly Park program say it offers the kind of outdoor activities that are increasingly rare these days, especially for kids from urban neighborhoods. I find that students don't have as much access to outdoor areas unless they go to a park or a nature center or they go on a hike with their family. It's so important for kids to know how they can make a positive impact on the environment, what they can do at home, in their own neighborhoods, in their own communities. It's been nearly 50 years since this hidden camp in the foothills first became an educational playground and kids still cherish the chance to come here and connect with nature. It's a connection teachers say is just as important to their growth as the lessons they'll learn back in the classroom. The kids come back a little more mature, a little more responsible, a little bit more independent, and they're just ready to tackle different challenges when they return. Give them a hand. On the count of three, we're gonna do group seven, okay? One, two, three. Group seven! All right, get to work, guys. That's it for this edition of Inside California Education. 
If you'd like more information about the program, just log on to our website, InsideCaled.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. There we go. Press the button right on top. This is really cool. Look at the jackets. Oh, but it made it over. It made it over. So like we've used Khan Academy before, you guys are going to be numbered off and do the different civilizations and take notes. Do you guys have your notes from the first two sections? We went through and analyzed word choice. Keep it up. Peekaboo! Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. So, Greg, it's a lot to take in. And I know that's hard to hear, but the doctors caught it early. Hi, Blake. My dad has cancer. And I know how hard that is to hear, but you're in the right place. And Dr. Pascal and her team, they know what to do. They know what to do. The doctors know what to do. So here's the plan. First off, we're going to give you all this The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.